Today we will be interviewing a new Kalana Jaya Member of Parliament, Lok Guburn. Okay, um, you are easily one of the most controversial slash mysterious candidate um, for the 12th general elections. So um, how did you feel about that getting that sort of, that, that being a, a label for you to start off your political career with? <laughs> Oh, well, that's a very good question. See, actually, um, well, being in a unique position, I, I suppose, um, I think there is a um, advantages and disadvantages as well. I mean, I get some. I think I, I get judged unfairly by some certain quarters, and um, but on the other hand, I think. Um, Unlike many, much many of the um, other, other candidates, I, I I got quite a lot of exposure from the mainstream media as well. So um, I suppose, you know, as um, they put it, you know, negative media is better than no media. So <laughs> and so, I think that actually gave me some um, you know, some credit as well. So, yeah. I mean, there are actually a lot of um, criticism saying that had PKR field any candidate in Kanajaya somewhat, um, they would have won, and it's not just you. Well, I, I mean, this is uh, right now just you know speculation. I mean, we will never know, right? <laughs> but the the, the the fact was, um, I think before the elections. Um, I was told that the Kalanja seat was actually sort of like a like a hot potato, you know, they were like trying nobody really wanted to be here because they thought, you know, Li Hua Bing was too great a mountain to climb, so yeah, they, they everybody was like, He won, how? You know, so I mean af, I mean after after the status settled down you can say whatever you whatever you want, but I mean, the but, fact but how did you face those sort of criticisms before the elections, during campaigning? That anybody could have won. Yeah. But basically, when I came, everybody said you're going to lose. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I said, really, I, I think I don't know. I got a chance. So. So you felt like you, you did have a chance. Yeah, I remember um, one of the reporters mm -hmm. called me during the vote counting. They said, oh, how's it going? How's it going? I said, um. We only counted. I thought it was her. We only counted for like <coughs> counted like a few stations, but I'm leading slightly. She was like, "Really, really? How many?" I was like, "Um, I'm, I'm leading about 1,000 votes." And, and then I could I could hear her turn away from the phone to tell her colleagues, and there was a cheer in, in the press room. And they said, "We couldn't believe that you're, lead, you're leading. You know, wish you the best of luck." And, and I. I mean, they were, they seem to be genuinely surprised. So, so. So, how how well versed are you with Malaysian politics? Sort of a prior before you came back for to well, testify in a royal commission well, um, and after. Basically, I mean, I've been following the news all along, and uh, actually, I used to read Malaysia Kini before you needed to, <laughs> you <had> to pay. <laughs> but of course, we we do now as well, but. Um, so I used to follow, but I would say I was I was more well versed with the macro issues. So were you ever interested in sort of becoming a politician any point in time prior to this, or it just only came up after that particular century journalist asked you what you plan to do with your fame? <laughs> well, I mean, interest in I mean, I've always had interest in politics. Right. In I mean, in politics in the general sense, like you're interested in politics, right? Mm -hmm. But never came, really never came across my mind to. Um, it wasn't one of my life ambitions, like I would say. Um, so, this is a uh, change in direction for me. So. There are actually a lot of speculations that. Um, this is the one that um, people have been saying, you know, they ask journalists, you know, for information and stuff. And I've got quizzed whether. 
did, did your dad actually pay a big sum of money to the party and to guarantee you a seat for Kalana Jaya or uh, something like that? No. No? So those are not true. Those are purely rumours <laughs> and speculation. It's not true. It's, um, I don't even know where that came from. We, uh, we <laughs> no, it's just basically nonsense. Huh? And so, um, uh, so, uh, so what, what are going to be the issues that you're going to raise in Parliament? What kind of issues are going to be your focus? Well, of course, the um, the five main points pointed out by uh, our, our leader, um, Wang Jiza, um those would be, most of them would be um, according to what we believe. On a personal issue, I mean, the judiciary, the judiciary obviously is a um, one of our you know, main agendas because we have um, seen firsthand mm -hmm. the uh, what is what's wrong with the our, our judiciary and of course of, of course the a lot of issues I mean like the economic development issues for me um, the national car policy. is a big issue because I believe national car policy is the is the cause for a lot of our you know commuter problems today I believe for example I believe that our traffic problem is because of the national car policy because they want to support the national car policy the uh, public transportation system was purposely made inefficient mm -hmm. which leads to all these you know tra traffic problems that we are facing every day today then you know then the tolls and things like that I mean I think everything is related in uh, in some manner when you talk about a certain issue you pull out you see all the uh, <laughs> routes coming along as well so so it's very hard to <coughs> to say that you know, you're interested in just one thing because this thing would be related to other issues, for example the judiciary is related to corruption and when you talk about corruption then you'll be wondering what, what our anti-corruption agency is doing why is it so inefficient and also of course down, down, down to the bottom you ask if our government is not doing a proper job. All this, there's so much, so, so much, so much wrong going on in the country. What is the media doing? Why isn't the media exposing all this? So it goes down to press freedom at the end, right? Get back to the original question about the main, the main needs in your constituency in Kalana Jaya. The sort of the short term and medium, medium term needs. What are the issues that needs to be addressed in here? Yeah. Um, Actually, we're trying to talk to the um, to the residents and the police about that as well. Um, in in both in, in, in my constituency, the crime rate is a really really um, pointy issue at at this point. Uh, I and I think I feel the crime rates can be reduced given proper policing or more efficient policing. So we are trying to talk to um, the local enforcement and the local re residents to come up with a with the best way to, to move forward. Because obviously you cannot expect the police to stand outside your house every day. You wouldn't want that. But at the same time, you want, we want to feel safe as well because apparently there's a lot of robberies going on. There's one particular street I went, they told me they had four break-ins along the same street within a month. I mean, that cannot be <laughs> be right, right? I mean, there's something seriously wrong going on there. So, um, the locals that had the sort of um, they employed a guard and put it outside the community, and uh, the, uh, the the local city council they were objecting to it. 